taking a video that looks like this and converting it to something that looks like this is just one of the many cool things you'll learn to do with virtually no technical expertise whatsoever or even a GPU or a computer that will run software that creates this stuff. Now, how in the world are you going to do something like that? Well, this all becomes possible with Mimic PC, which is a regular sponsor on our channel because they provide the ability for people who do not have high-end computers or necessarily a lot of technical expertise to run some of these higher-end AI applications on remote systems that are powerful enough to run these applications without choking. And all of this for just a couple of dollars an hour compared to purchasing a computer and a high-end graphics card for thousands of dollars. If you're just getting started in the world of AI, you might want to play with it a little bit first to make sure that it's something that you want to invest in at that level in terms of hardware. Each week we've been choosing one application on the platform to focus on to let you see how it works and give you access to playing with it. But this week I'm going to show you something a little bit different because they've added something that I've been wanting them to add for quite a while and that is their discovery section. If you're new to Mimic PC you should know that it's free to set up an account and once you do that you'll have access to a whole collection of AI applications. Things like image generators, audio generators, and video generators. Also text-to-speech and voice cloning applications. One of the unique abilities of Mimic PC is the ability to share templates of applications with others. For example, this is the workflow in Comfy UI that created the video that we started with. You feed in a video here, you type in how you'd like the style to change, in this case turning it into an anime man, and then it comes out like this on the other side. But what about all this spaghetti? What if you don't know how to use Comfy UI, and what if you're not interested in learning right away, you just like these results? The ability for creators of these types of workflows to save them as templates that are shareable opens up a world of possibilities for people who are not technically inclined to try out some of these advanced workflows. Along the left side of the main screen, you have the Discover section. Now this is a new feature and this collection of workflows is growing, but there's some cool stuff that we can look at. You'll see that they're all categorized, new and hot, image editing, 3D creation, restoring and upscaling, workflows to create images, and workflows to create videos. In our anime conversion example, I actually use this workflow right here. And to use any of these workflows, all you have to do is click apply. Then you choose the hardware you want this application to run on. Because AI applications are generally pretty memory intensive, I normally go for either a large pro, large pro plus, or even the ultra if I'm running applications that are particularly memory intensive. And although the price of the ultra is say twice the price of the large, I have found in a lot of tests that the speed of the processing is three times faster. So I'm actually saving money by using the ultra machine and things are going a lot faster. So in this case, I would choose the ultra machine, but you can choose whatever machine you want. And then once you hit create and start, in a couple of minutes, it will have built the machine and loaded this workflow ready for you to just plug in what you need. In this case, just a starting video and a text instruction. Now, if you are interested in learning Comfy UI, this is a great way to learn how things work by using other people's examples. Let's look at a couple more. An example would be that the Stable Diffusion 3.5 medium model just came out. You may or may not know what I'm talking about, but this is a text to image generator that you might want to play with because it's among the latest and greatest models out there. But if you don't want to have to download the models and figure out how to do workflows, that's okay because somebody has already done this for you. We have Comfy UI Stable Diffusion 3.5 Medium Text to Image Workflow. We'll just click Apply. I'll choose a large pro machine this time and click Create and Start. It generally takes about a half a minute to two minutes for these machines to start. You're not charged for any of this time. And that sound means we're all done. And here's the workflow. A lot of times the creators of these workflows will leave you a little note to tell you how things work. In this case, it's telling you what models you need, but you don't need to worry about that because all of this comes preloaded with everything you need. I absolutely don't have to do anything else. The 3.5 model is loaded and it just needs a text prompt. And in this case, it's got the default of a bottle with a rainbow galaxy inside of top of a wooden table. Let's do something else. A man is sitting on a picnic table holding a sign that says Bob Doyle Media. It is beginning to snow, but he is dressed in shorts and a black AC DC tank top. Let's cue this prompt by clicking the cue prompt button. At this point, the various models are loading and you can see what's going on in Comfy where the green rectangle is. It's highlighting the area that's being processed at the moment. And now we're seeing our picture come into existence. That's the preview and here we go. It's an okay generation. Got the text right. And this is a good starting point. 
most of these workflows add things like upscalers and refiners, and these are things that you can find in the discovery section as well. But this at least gives you an idea of how easy it is to get started with these. Let's do another one. Let's go over to the Flux section, and let's go down to a basic image inpainting workflow. I'll choose the Ultra model, get this started. In case you're not aware, inpainting basically gives you the ability to add elements to a picture or to modify them in some way simply by selecting those areas and then giving it a text prompt, which truly revolutionizes image editing. Boom, the headphones are gone. So now we've got the workflow and it labels up here what's going on. This is where we're loading the Flux model and the various things it needs to make that work. And then the prompt words are going to be what we want to change in the image, but we first have to load in an image. So here's an image of a guy and a cat looking out a window at a bird, which is kind of flying weird or whatever. What inpainting allows us to do is to change some of these elements. For example, I'm going to select this area right here, the bird and the birdhouse, by clicking open in mask editor, increasing the brush size a little bit. And I'm just going to select this whole area here because I'm gonna replace this bird feeder in a bird with something else completely. Click on save to node. And now in the prompt, let's change this to a flying baby dragon. The one change I will make here through my own experimentation is to increase the number of steps here to something much higher because within painting I have found that this just works better. I'm gonna choose 50 here, maybe overkill. And at that point, we're ready to cue the prompt. Now be aware that loading some of these models can take time. The Flux model, for example, is a pretty large model. So if you're new to this and you click cue start and nothing seems to be happening, just be aware that there's time involved, especially the first time you run a Comfy UI workflow for the models to load. If you're familiar with Comfy UI and the concept of LoRa's, you can add LoRa's here. And if you wanted to add more than one LoRa, you could modify this workflow by copying this and pasting another one and then linking them up. Or if you don't need another one and just want to change what's there, you can choose one from a drop-down list. For example, there are LoRa files that will actually speed up this rendering process pretty significantly, and you may want to install one of those. Over here, we see the work in progress is almost done. Now you see the result there. Let's keep going. I'm just gonna save this image real quick and then use it as the starting image here. I'm gonna create a new mask the same way we did before, open in mask editor. And this time, let's change the cat head into something else and actually draw in the space allowing for what I'm going to do because we're going to make Lucy here a giraffe or at least her head, or we're gonna try. So here we will change the prompt to giraffe head and click Q prompt. The models have already loaded, so the process starts really immediately and we can watch it happen over here. In painting is fun. And there you go, easy peasy. Let's try one more. We'll do this product cutout and background replacement workflow. Click apply, we'll choose our machine. Ooh, that looks scary, doesn't it? Let's see how scary it really is. First of all, it's got a note up here for some guidelines. Here we have background reference image upload area. So I'm just gonna guess my way through this. I'm gonna choose this as a background image. And then the product image upload area. Here's the product with the background already on it. Here we have models loaded that I can't even read. And then here is, I assume, a description of what this is all about. What does this say? CADs, I don't know what that is. Setting poster, 3D e-commerce scene, product exhibition. For right now, I'm gonna leave this how it is just to see what happens when I leave it at default because this is how you learn. You say, okay, well, here's the starting workflow. I don't know what's happening. Let me just run it and see what happens and then see if I can pick it apart. There's really a lot of sections here. I don't know what's happening. I can see that this prompt is in several places. Let's just cue this thing and see what happens. The first thing it seems to be doing is cutting out this product. I assume it's trying to figure out, well, what in this picture is the product and what's the background? This process is looking at the image and determining all the different things in it, and it's actually picking out a subject. We've told it to pick out the subject, and look at that. It did a great job. It knew exactly what the subject was. It cut out everything else. It'll be interesting to see how this comes into play. Now we've got some control nets going on to further determine the look of this thing. It does seem like this area here is going to cause something of an issue, or at least have an impact on the outcome. We're getting the beginnings of something over here. Move all this out of the way. Oh, look at that. Now it's on a back background, but it's not my background. It is the background probably described here. Photographic light showcase round marble podium, product display, green yellow forest background, plant leaves, frame studio lighting, so on. So it definitely followed the prompt more than it did this. However, it does look like it borrowed perhaps some of the color palette, maybe even some of the composition. You'll see the water here along the bottom. Water here along the bottom, basically the same color. Let's see what's happening here. Detail migration and color adjustment. All right, now we're coming together. This is really interesting. And now it looks like we might be in the final step, which is an upscale. Now my curiosity is getting the best of me as it always does in situations like this. So while this is finishing up, I'm gonna start this again and I'm gonna change this reference image to something with a distinctly different look and see how it affects the final image. Let's use that as a reference image. I can't imagine what it's gonna take from that in this scene. I'm still not gonna change the text prompt. We'll get that going. 
I want to stress again, especially if you're brand new to Comfy UI, which it can look very intimidating when you first look at it with all these wires and nodes and everything. But loading in workflows that someone else has done is probably one of the best ways to learn this. Messing around with settings, just trying things based on somebody else's work is a way for you to have your own aha moments, which is what I particularly appreciate about the discovery section because some of these workflows are doing things that I've been wanting to get around to, but I just didn't want to take the time to get it all set up. And now I can just go right to it. So I, even if I find a piece of a workflow that I like in somebody else's workflow, then I can incorporate it into my own. So it's a great way to learn and build your skills. We can see that that wonky mask did actually have an effect. If we put these side by side, this little square here is obviously there because of this mask. So in a real working situation, I would probably come up here and start to mess with some of these values to see if I could get this out of there. So that last round of upscaling or amplification may have been a little bit of overkill because it seems like it has sort of a weird impact on the water here. And this is the beauty of learning something like Comfy UI because I'm well aware that there are a lot of apps out there that make processes like this pretty simple. You upload an image and boom, it's done. But if you really want to take control of the process and learn how to dig deeper and be able to do exactly what you want, well, then that's why you learn about the back end here. And just adjusting settings like that is a great way to learn. Now, check this out. Here's a preliminary result of using this as the reference image. So it very definitely has an impact. Of course, the point here wasn't to fully demonstrate any of these particular workflows or feature them. It was to show you that these types of things are available for your discovery over here on Mimic PC. So if you're just getting started with Comfy UI, or even if you've been using it for a while, but there are some workflows that you just haven't messed with because of time or whatever reason, you like I might have a lot of fun over there at the discovery section for quick and easy setup of some of these more advanced workflows. If this is the type of thing you like to learn more about, well, then why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already? Because these are the types of things we talk about all the time. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...